According to the words of the great William Shakespeare, and I quote, Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them. End of quote. These words perfectly describe Senator Abiola Adeyemi Ajimobi, former governor of Oyo State, who has distinguished himself as a selfless, fearless, and grassroots political leader. Born to the family of Alaji Ganyu Ajao and Alaja Sikirat Abeji Ajimobi, of blessed memory, the young Abiola attended St. Patrick's Primary School, Ukekbadi, Ibadan, Lagilu Grammar School, Ibadan, State University of New York, Buffalo, USA, and Governor's State University, Illinois, USA. The former governor of Oyo State was a one-time senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and has worked in several formidable organizations. Senator Abiola Adeyemi Ajimobi is a Democrat who enjoys the respect of both the young and old. On Sunday, the 15th of December, 2019, drums were rolled out to celebrate this quintessential gentleman as he clocked 70 years. The birthday celebration kicked off with a special interdenominational Thanksgiving service held at the residence of the celebrants in Uluyoli Estate in Ibado, Oyo State. In attendance were former governor of Oyo State, Chief Adibayala Akala, billionaire and respected elder statesman, Basharu Kola Daisi, former deputy governor of Lagos State, Princess Sarah Shoson, two-time minister and former president LCCI, Chief Dr. Mrs. Nikki Akonde, CON, wife of the Minister of Works and Housing, Dame Abimbala Fashola, wife of the Minister of Interior, Mrs. Sherifat Aribgeshola, Senator Jocelyn Folari, and other distinguished guests. To set the tone for the evening, Big Bolaji led guests in the praise and worship session, after which the first hymn, Rock of Ages, was sang. This was immediately followed by a special ministration by Fumi Ajayi, who took guests to another level of praise using the saxophone. <laughs> In the sermon delivered by the senior pastor RCCG Jesus House UK, Pastor Agu Iruku, he said, Birthdays are special occasions, and as such, as a time to reflect on the greatness of God. He said, Birthdays are times to appreciate God's goodness 
as well as count the numerous blessings of God in our lives. He ended the sermon with prayers for the celebrants. You have to think about what God has done in your life. And this birthday is not no exception. At 70 years old, we are celebrating someone who is very dear to all of us. But then it is an opportunity for the family, for the celebrant, and for those of us who have been invited to really pause and take stock. It's the nature of birthdays, you know. I remember while growing up in Sunday school, they taught us a song, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. A birthday provides that opportunity to count your blessings, name them one by one, and see what God has done. The reason we've been asked to come here is not just religious. It's not just so that it can be said that the Ajimobis did the right thing by calling us together for a Thanksgiving service. The reason we are called here is because genuinely from the heart of this family is a family that is grateful to God. There were a series of prayer sessions for the celebrant, his children, the state of Oyo and Nigeria by different clergymen. This swiftly led to the Thanksgiving session as the celebrant was joined by his amiable wife, Mrs. Florence Ajimobi, and amazing children who danced forward, giving glory to the Most High. In his remarks, Senator Abiola Jumobi appreciated all for their presence, noting that the occasion was to celebrate the grace of God upon him, as God has been very kind to him. He ended by appreciating everyone for being a part of his success story, particularly his wife, whom he really professed his love to and described her as his pillar of strength. We are just here to celebrate God. For he has been so kind. In celebrating him, I just want a small song before I now recognize all my fathers in the Lord that are here. Orinye o suit mi kupo kupo. It's like we told him nothing calling here. Mu defeke joke ba mi ko. Mu fi line ke tasi be meji lo manu ambe. So, Eli Jekin Bere, Timbawa, Tipari, Lion, Kaino Abani. Go be more shame, go to be more sorrow, or shan't talk to me. To be sure, Jane, who sorrowed the professor to be to be loyal. Mosso. Charity of our cruel office. Who nearly rule by? Believe me, a one our fathers in the Lord. I want to man want in my shape only. These are the people who always attended everything I did. And they are here. Listen, me, whoever got contract, don't call me when I was there. So, because the contract, you would have a phone. And they came. I shake on you. I appreciate you more. I appreciate you, sir. Ain't not tell the hour, my call rush through. Eh, forgive me to re on your penny because you go. Ah, so policy can you go? No policy statement. It's just to recognize all of you and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just here to praise God. It's a, it's a day of celebration, it's a day of gratitude, and it's a day 
where we must appreciate God. A day of appreciation. And for me, I appreciate God. For he has been so kind to me. Who am I? Who am I? Latibo. Tibade will be more cheap. He be too much bearing. He be too much delaying. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank all of you and God bless you. The Thanksgiving service was brought to an end with a vote of thanks delivered by the daughter of the celebrant, Mrs. Abisola Kola Daisi, nay Ajumobi. The celebration continued on Monday, the 16th of December, 2019, at the International Conference Center, University of Ibado, with the second Abiola Ajumobi round table themed Managing the Dynamics of Nigeria's Advancement, the Socioeconomic Perspectives. The roundtable discussion brings together brilliant minds with a view of harnessing diverse thoughts and perspectives in achieving national goals. Leading the rich list of guests present were Vice President Yemi Oshibajo and wife Mrs. Dolakbo Oshibajo, Minister of Interior Ogbeni Raouf Arigbeshola and wife Mrs. Sherifat Arigbeshola, Minister of Youth and Sports Mr. Sunday Dari, Minister of State for Health Senator Lorunimbe Mamura, Governor Babajidi Saolu of Lagos State, Dakwa Abiodo of Ogun State, Abubaka Atiku Bagudu of Kibbe State, Rutimi Akiridulu of Ndo State, Abdullahi Umaru Ganduji of Kano State, and Kayode Fayemi of Ikiti State. Others were Deputy Governor of Oyo State, Engineer Raul Folanio, Former Governor of Ogun State, Chief Fulushegon Shoba, Former Governor of Ogun State, Senator Bikula Musu and wife, Mrs. Olufun Shamusu. Former Governor of Oyo State, Atumba Lawakala. Former Governor of Oshun State, Prince Olagun Soyo Yilola. Former Military Governor of Ogun State, Brigadier General Raja Razaki retired. Former Governor of Oshun State, Chief B.C. Akonde. The Chairman of the Occasion, Lieutenant General Alani Akinri Ade retired. Foremost Industrialist and Ibado High Chief, Basharu Kola Daisi. APC Southwest Zonal Women Leader, Chief Mrs. Kemi Nelson. Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, the Right Honorable Mudashiro Abasa, the Chairman, Troika Holdings, Mr. Biodu Shobanjo, former Deputy Governor of Oshun State, Mrs. Titi Lao Yikbonli, two-time Minister and former President LCCI, Chief Dr. Mrs. Niki Akonde, CUN, Honorable Shino Pella, the Chairman and CEO of Biscon Communications, Prince Bisiolatilo, as well as other distinguished guests. First Ladies of Ogun, Ekiti, Delta, Kanu and Edo states, as well as wife of the Minister of Works and Housing, Dame Abibola Fashola, were fully present to give their unwavering support to the wife of the celebrant, Dr. Mrs. Florence Ajimobi. Royal fathers in attendance were their laughing over your, His Royal Majesty, Oba Lamidi Adeyemi II, the Oni of Ife. His Imperial Majesty, Oba Adeyeye Nitogunsi, or Jaja II, the Uluwu of Iwo, His Royal Majesty, Oba Abdul Rashid Akombi, the Legushi of Ikateland, His Royal Majesty, Oba Saidi Legushi, Kusin Lade III, the Emir of Lafia Emirates, Al Haji Sidi Baji Muhammad I, while the White Cap Chiefs of Lagos represented the Oba of Lagos, His Royal Majesty, Oba Rilwan Akunlu, among other traditional rulers and chiefs. The event commenced with the recitation of the national and state anthems, after which the welcome address was delivered by Mr. Soji Emiade. This was followed by the keynote address, delivered by Professor Ayo Lukotun. In his presentation, Professor Ayo Lukotun noted that, despite Nigeria's position as Africa's preeminent power, by most conventional indices, it is a country battling with several challenges which have led to its naming as poverty capital of the world with roughly over 90 million nigerians living on less than two dollars a day the professor added that despite the efforts of the government to enhance social security there are still social hurdles such as urban housing crisis humanitarian crisis and a subsistence infrastructural gap he spoke about unemployment and suggested solutions to tackle the challenge. I have on page 10 what I call selected countries in 2018 mystery index. And Nigeria is one of 10 most miserable people 
country in the world. Uh, and that table also tells you the major contributing factor why these countries are miserable. In the case of Nigeria, which is number six, it's yes, unemployment. It's unemployment. Nigerians, Nigerians are extremely miserable because a lot of them are employed. Unemployment is not just uh, a debility. It is one that comes with a lot of other woes. And of course, I don't need to tell this audience that crime, banditry, and all associated rules are very much related to unemployment. The round table discussion which followed immediately was moderated by Professor Tunjo Laogba. The discussions were Mrs. Ibukwa Wushika. Ogbeni Raouf Aribeshola and Mr. Shion Nigbinde. They gave their views on the topic, after which an interactive session followed. Education is at the center of too many things. Education affects economic empowerment. Education affects the success of our political system because an enlightened electorate is an asset to democracy but an unenlightened electorate is a liability to the process of democracy. An empowered, educated mind is a resource for creating economic development, either through entrepreneurship, innovation, or solution provision in different enterprises that they work. So education is, is too critical in terms of um, what we need to do. We need to close the loop of policies we cannot have isolated policies from one end to the other. We need to understand the impact of one policy made at a federal level by one ministry and how it affects the work or the policy that is made by another ministry. People look at things in silos and that's destructive to uh, the economic activities of uh, industry. So how do we make Nigeria work for majority of the people, for the poor, who are clearly in the majority, who by his own definition. How does Nigeria work for the people of Nigeria? And comforts are being gradually threatened. And that is why there is this concern about what do we do to satisfy the poor. So I'm therefore talking from the position of a poor, poor person who genuinely believes that we cannot really progress if we are bound as we have been doing. We ourselves as a people have to think what exactly can, else can we sell to the world apart from oil. It's not about what we can sell to ourselves. The first question that Nigeria's answer is how much can we sell to the world apart from oil? And that's going to change our fiscal balance. That's going to change our external reserves balance. So it starts from that about how we are not going to improve our productivity in terms of someone we're going to sell to the world, we're going to change our port system, we're going to fix our infrastructure, we're going to know that the skill level that we need has to be globally competitive. But if we keep looking inward and we stay on that level, we're just going to be flirting with mediocrity. Thank you. The chairman of the occasion, General Iqbola Alania Kimriade, retired, later delivered his address as chairman of the occasion. May I ask this audience, since we are all his family, friends, and acquaintances, how you describe an Ibadoman, Ibadan son, declaring a season of a bound renewal of Ibadan, and taking bulldozers to bury what came over him to pursue the Ibadan, who publicly supported his vandalism, Dito, for Kabezi, Ikuba Bayi, even the son of Omojo, to allow him massive demolitions in those ancient and historic universities. Act where you are part. There all the honor lies, says the saint. You did everything your way. The food prayed will vindicate you and announce the father's wish that all 
more successors in your York, or your state will be strengthened to push on the physical and human development of this state. Other events that followed were the goodwill messages of distinguished personalities present. The event compact, being at the Inca the first, read out the goodwill messages of Rahaji Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak of Kwara State and that of President Muhammad Buhari. <laughs> Presentation of gift items followed next. The cutting of the birthday cake was supervised by Hajiya Meiro Tanku Almakura, special assistant to the First Lady, after which a photo and video session ensued. To bring the first half of the second phase of the celebration to an end was the vote of thanks delivered by the celebrant, Senator Abiola Jumobi. <laughs> Without further ado, the second half of the celebration kicked off with a performance by talented saxophonist BJ Sax, who ushered in the birthday boy alongside other family members and friends into the arena.
The presentation of the SAA's awards followed next. The award was presented to individuals who have been very outstanding in their relationship with the Ajumobi family over the years. It was a way of showing their appreciation and love to them. It was entertainment and merriment all the way, as the vintage band and King Sonny Ade thrilled guests to the best of music. From Biscon Communications, it's 70 hearty cheers to the former governor of your state, Senator Abiola Ajimobi. Happy birthday.